We're back on Mind Games Radio with Pete Spanos of Veta Sports. Pete's going to tell us about the great St. Louis soccer dribble. Hi, Tom. We came up with this uh, clever idea to break the Guinness World Record for most soccer balls dribbled at one time, all to help raise awareness and funds for St. Louis America scores. And when is it? It's coming up September 10th. Um, St. Louis University is uh, one of the hosts, and it's uh, going to be at 5 o'clock. We're going to have uh, we got kind of a carnival environment. You have coaches that are going to come out and help do uh, some some clinics. We're going to have magicians and drums, and then at six o'clock we're going to break the the Guinness record for most balls dribbled all at one time. And it, what's what's the cost on that? Cost is twenty five dollars, and that includes a t shirt, includes a certificate, and a ticket actually to the St. Louis U Akron game, which starts at seven p.m. In Akron, the defending national champions. Correct? Yeah, good, big, good, great game. Wow. Okay. Well, could you tell us a little bit about the the um, organization behind this America Scores? How does that program work? Yeah. What I love about America Scores is that it addresses two national uh, epidemic crises that we have in youth. It addresses directly obesity and it also uh, deals with literacy. So on Mondays and Wednesdays. What the kids do is they do soccer with the soccer instructor, and on Friday they get to play for their school. So we deal with obesity and nutrition on Mondays and Wednesdays with the actual coach. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, then the kids are going to write. So it's a creative writing program. And interestingly enough, it uses poetry as the hook. So the kids get to write poetry, and then that's what helps build the the literacy part of the program. So uh, would uh, some of the kids write rap then? They'll write rap, they'll write whatever, uh, whatever they want to write. And the, the kind of added element that I love about it is it also includes public speaking. So twice a year, all the kids get up on stage. It was like 500 people last time, all watching kids up wow. on stage, either writing or reciting whatever, uh, whatever poetry they wrote. And just generally, is this an underserved community that you are dealing with? Yeah, 90% of the kids are on the, uh, on the government uh, program. And uh, what we do is we engage the parents and along with the teachers in the program as well. So we have the kids, the parents, and the teachers all at one program. And, and Pete, somebody, I think it was Teresa was telling me in your organization that 70% of the kids involved lose weight and improve fitness? Right. The kids who start off obese uh, actually end up normalized by the time they get through the program. Part of the reason why is that we actually have the kids every single day for 10 weeks in a row in the fall and 10 weeks in the spring. So it's not like how many kids can we do. It's let's take the kids and really have an, an impact on on their skill sets needed for life. And, and she also told me, that, and this I just find unbelievable, that in addition to the 70% improvement in weight and fitness, that 70% of the kids involved improve their reading skills. Right. And, and part of the reason that is in order, in order to play soccer, you have to do the writing program. So writing isn't just sit down and write. It's let's write about what you care about. And then you have the teacher that converts it and they do it with poetry. And then they get they know that they get to publicly speak it up on stage uh, a couple months later. So it all works together to help build their skills. So and this is part of a national program. Right. Uh, a girl came up with it. And uh, if we get a chance a little bit later, I'd love to show you how the program started. Yeah, that'd be great. We could uh, get into that. And then how did it get started in St. Louis? Uh, well, I can just share with you uh, how I got involved with it. I, I really was bothered by the lack of access to soccer inside the urban uh, community. So I, um, I looked on the Internet and found um, in Indianapolis there was a convention on volunteer programs. Right in the middle of snow, I went out there, and I ran into the program America Scores. Turns out America Scores wasn't just doing soccer. They were just using soccer as a tool along with the writing program. And I thought, wow, what a great way to affect an entire child. Now, you know, you were really ahead of the curve because I, I don't know if you've been keeping up with, well, I'm sure you have, the appointment of Klinsman and how he, he is poised to reach into the the ghetto, so to speak, to get players, you know, that apparently now we're losing to Mexico. I don't know if you watched that game last night, Guadalajara against Barcelona, and all they were talking about was all these Mexican kids that grew up in America and now are playing in Mexico for Mexican teams. Well, I think there's a lot of opportunity for our, for our kids to play. Um, the beautiful thing about soccer is that it doesn't take much to get started. And uh, we have a lot of opportunities. We see the clubs working with kids all the time, coming in and uh, helping out. So the America Scores program uh, refers kids to the, to the clubs here locally. Hey, Pete, just briefly, 
give me a little bit about your background. I know you just got back from Greece. You have your lovely tan. <laughs> we did. We take our whole family every uh, two years to uh, to meet the family. My kids grew up. I grew up going to Greece in the summers, and we take our kids to make sure that they uh, understand another culture in addition to our own. And do you travel there much? Uh, every two years, we, we try to go ourselves or with the family. So how how do you get? But I, I guess I'm off the point a little bit because I, I'm interested in the soccer aspect, of course. What you know? Do you grow up playing as a kid? Yeah, I played a Division One at Miami of Ohio, and the way I started Veto was I wanted to to be a teacher, but um, instead of teaching, what I did is uh, I took a loan out and bought the the soccer dome and started instructional programs. <laughs> so the how instructional old were, how programs. Old were you then? Uh, about twenty eight years old. You hated did. what I was doing, so I <laughs> I really wanted to teach kids. Uh, really, not so much for the sport itself, but to use the sport as a tool for life skills, and that's really how uh, how the soccer dome in Veto started to grow. That's great. Let's do these instructional programs. Now, how many how many VETA sports are there right now? Uh, six locations now. How many people do you serve? Oh, gosh. Serve? Probably a couple million. <laughs> uh, go through our doors a year. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's so. very impressive. Very impressive. All right. How do people get more information, first of all, obviously, about the Great American Dribble? Well, it's, uh, it's September 10th. Um, the coming up, just go to either... Um, say stlunitedfc.net if you'd like, or you can just go to America Score St. Louis. Google that, and then right there you'll find you'll find the uh, the St. Louis soccer dribble. Pete Spanos, thank you very much for joining us.